Hello guys, welcome back. We are going to take a look at how to do a green screen effect, just like this one. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at three different kinds of keying effects. We're going to take a look at Premiere first of all, which has a keying effect called Ultra Key Effect. We're going to take a look at After Effects, which has something called Key Light Effect. And then last but not least, we're going to take a look at something called Primate Keyer, which is also an add-on for After Effects. Now before we get started on the actual post-production stuff, I really quickly want to talk to you guys about how to actually set up a green screen area. It is very important that you guys set up a green screen correctly because if you do not have the proper lighting, if you do not have the proper area to do it in, it can be a pain in the ass to try to do, you know, a green screen effect in post-production afterwards. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about different kinds of green screens out there. The one I have behind me here is a collapsible green screen. You can actually take it and unhook it and I'll actually show you guys. As you guys can see, I can actually squeeze it and it will actually be foldable and everything so I can actually bring it to my clients which is a really nice detail. Now what I have behind me here is really good on the go if you want to bring it to someone that you need to interview. Now if you want something bigger than that then you could always invest in a sheet, a big green screen sheet that you can actually hang up. Now the problem with the sheet though is that you need to make sure there's no folds in it. The reason this kind of green screen behind me is really good is because it stretches out by itself and eliminates all the folds. If you have a fold in your green screen, it's going to be a terrible thing to get rid of in post-production. A last solution to actually getting a green screen could be if you have a little studio somewhere, you could actually paint the walls the same chroma key green color that I have behind me here and use that as a green screen. That's more of a temporary solution where you actually have a location for it. So now that we talked about the different green screens you can use, let's go ahead and talk about the lighting because the lighting is very important. Now, don't underestimate the lighting because it is super crucial that you have really good lighting when you do a green screen because otherwise it's going to screw it all up. So as you guys can see, I do have a lot of different lights in here and the way I positioned them, I set it all up, is not really the correct way to do it but I'm going to talk to you guys about how to do it. So I have a lot of different lights in here and the ones that I use are actually LED lights. Now you can use all kinds of lighting for green screens. Uh, you see a lot of professional green screeners, they have these huge lights set up that you can use. Now for more of a cheaper way to do it, now I bought these at something like Office Depot for very little amount of money, uh, maybe like $20. And I got a couple of these and these are just regular LED lights that I found very useful in order to do LED uh, lighting on a green screen. I have a, I have a couple of different kinds. This one is more powerful, which I do use a lot for my green screen. Uh, I also have a portable one, which I can actually adjust the levels on if I needed to. This one is more for my face if I use it for my face. Um, but basically lighting is very important. I also have spotlights up here. You, you really need to make sure that you light up the green screen so it's completely green. You do not want to have dark spots on it because dark spots are so hard to remove in, uh, in post-production. And if you do have dark spots, you can sometimes get um, dark areas around yourself, which can be really tough to remove also, especially around clothing. Now, one thing you can do to get rid of the halo effect that you sometimes get when you do green screens is actually to have a light pointed, uh, standing behind your back pointing forward to sort of get this glow around you that will eliminate some of the green color that you experience when you do green screening. When it comes to the talent, which is the person standing in front of the camera talking, you also need to make sure you light them up correctly because when you have the green screen lit up, if you do not light up the talent correctly, you can sometimes get spill on the talent, which is not good. When you do a green screen, now I'm standing fairly close to my green screen here, which is, not, which is not good. If I stood further away from it, it would actually give me a better effect. But if I do get closer to it, it's gonna start spilling off of my clothes, especially if I have bright clothes on. And then you can see the green stuff on your clothing when you have to remove it in post-production, which is not good. So the further away you stand, the better it is. So now that we talked about how to do the green screen setup, let's go ahead and talk about how to do the post-production stuff. Okay, so now we can get started on the post-production process. I figured we would start out with Premiere. And inside Premiere, I did actually import my uh, video clip, which is the same clip you guys just saw a few seconds ago. Um, now, before we start adding any keying effect in here, which by the way, we're going to be using the ultra key effects. We need to make sure that the clip looks like it needs to before we add the key effects. The, the cool thing about uh, Premiere and After Effects is that when you add on effects, let's say I add the keying effect first and then I add, let's say, color correction. If I color correct it after I add the key effect, I will only color correct whatever is left after I key out the background. Now if I add the color effect first and then add on the key effect, I'm going to color correct the uh, green background also and then the, the keying effect can actually be um, uh, influenced by the effect I added before it. 
which we actually do need to do. So we're going to go into effects here, and the first effect I'm going to call out is levels. Now, the reason we want to do this is because, as you guys can see, there is a couple of dark spots on my background here that I do need to remove. So I'm going to add a level onto my clip, and I'm going to take the red, green, blue, white input level, and I'm going to sort of make it a bit brighter, just slightly, like so. And as you guys can see, it sort of fades out the, the dark spots just as, you know, slightly, which we need to do. After we've done this, I'm going to go ahead and add brightness and contrast to my clip. Another effect we have down here. And after I've done that, I want to set the contrast a little bit up, just slightly, to about, let's say, 10. And as you guys can see, the, the green becomes more obvious. Now, we're going to add on the key effect. And we're going to search down in the search bar for Ultra Key, which is down here in the video effects. Put it onto the clip, take the, the drop tool, and click on the darkest place you can find inside the, the green color, like this one. And as you guys can see, uh, we can actually tell that there's some gray areas behind here. Now, if I take a clip or a photo and put it behind here, let's just go ahead and take the same background I used before, and put underneath the clip, like so. There we go. Uh, you can actually see that you know, it's not really apparent, but if the clip that I had in the background was moving and all that, you would actually be able to see these gray areas here. So we need to get rid of all that. Now, we also need to get rid of all this uh, outside stuff. So I'm actually going to go into my effects panel and say crop. And just sort of crop it down a little bit. I'm going to say left. And I'm going to crop it till here. I'm going to say right. And crop it till roughly here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the Ultra Key effect that we added on there inside our Effects Controls panel here. And we're gonna go down into where it says Matter Correction, a uh, Generation, sorry. We're gonna go down to the Highlight, and we're gonna tone it down. Now, depending on how good you want the key, you probably don't wanna tone it down too much. The more you tone it down, the, the more the, uh, the background, the, the gray stuff disappears. But you also want to be careful you don't over adjust some of these settings. Now what you're going to do is, well, it actually looks quite good now, and I think I did a pretty good green screen when I did record it. Uh, if we play this, I'll actually show you guys. Let's go ahead and play it from here. Now I'm just going to set it to half uh, over here, otherwise it might lag a lot when you preview this. So if we play this, you can actually see we have some keying going on here. Now it's not perfect, and Premiere is not the optimal program for, for doing this sort of, you know, keying. As you guys can see, there's a little bit of flickering. It's okay for what it needs to do if you're just going to do something rough. Uh, we can actually play around with it for a little bit more. If you go down to, uh, let's see, matte cleanup, you can actually adjust the contrast also, which will also, as you guys can see, there's actually some, uh, you can actually go out here to the output here and say alpha channel. And we can see some of the spots that might show up. If I zoom in here, uh, you can actually see we have some gray areas on top of my t-shirt. If I go to contrast and buff it, up, uh, buff it up a little bit, you can actually see it disappears. But my hair will also take a little bit of damage by doing that. So if I just take it up, just like, not all the way, but enough for it to look pretty good. I'm gonna go back to composite output, and then we can sort of preview it again. So as you guys can see, there's a bit of spill here. Um, the hair looks okay, I would say, and the outline look okay. Under the arms, you can see we sort of have this weird water effect going on under the armpits and uh, under the forearm, which is not good. Um, but you can always play on these settings for a little bit and see what they do and actually adjust these. Let's go ahead and pause the video here. Let's go back a little bit. There we go. And then play around the settings. If I soften the edges a little bit, it will take care of some of that rough roughness. So if we play it again here, you can see it actually looks okay. So Premiere is not the best program for this, I would say. It's my personal opinion, but I do use this in some of my videos, on, on most of my videos on my channel, because it is very quick to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at After Effects now. Okay, so now we're inside After Effects, and I figured we would try to play with the key light effect that you have inside After Effects. So the way to get key light onto the clip, well, first of all, like I said, you need to adjust the levels and such. So we're gonna go ahead and go over here to the Effects panel, and we're gonna search for levels. I'm going to go ahead and drag my levels onto the footage. 
And then we can sort of adjust it here. So I'm just gonna adjust it a little bit. Now the levels inside Premiere is a little different. We have that white output down here. Uh, go ahead and move that white output. Don't move the, the bar up here, like I did in the first time. We're gonna brighten it up a little bit. We're gonna go over here, we're gonna say brightness and contrast onto the clip. Gonna give it around 10, just like before, like so. And now we're gonna go ahead and key out the background. So we're gonna go ahead and search for key light, which is down here, key light 1.2. And over here you can actually see we have the key light effect here. So what I'm gonna do here first is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select a screen color. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the drop tool, choose the darkest area and then fade it out. So as you guys can see, it's faded out. Now, the nice thing about After Effects is that you can actually go up and very specifically cut out. You don't have to crop, you can actually cut out the background with a mask. So while we have this clip down here selected, I'm gonna go ahead and go up and select the pen tool, click it, and then I'm sort of gonna draw around the edge of my green screen, like so. Just draw around here. And when we connect it at the end here, you'll see that it fades out everything else which is really nice. Um, so as you guys can see, there's a little bit of grainy stuff around the edges and all that. That's because we did not adjust the layer yet. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna go ahead and shift over to uh, Source Alpha, I believe. No, not Source Alpha. It is called Combined Matte. Uh, and then you can actually see all the gray areas and such uh, and those things. So we're gonna go down to the screen balance. I'm gonna just adjust it a little bit here. As you guys can see, we're sort of correcting it. I guess I need to put it all the way down as I can see. You can also play with the screen gain. Just gonna black out the, the gray areas like so. All right. Now we don't want it too much because we're actually erasing some of the white stuff on top of us, which is not good. Go down to screen mat and go ahead and take a look at the stuff. We can actually start chipping with the white, adjust the white a little bit. So we'll say, okay, we got it up there. And I think it looks good now. If you have more black spots, you can actually chip with the uh, clip with the white, uh, the black, and adjust that. There's a lot of different settings in here. You can actually soften the screen and all that. So let's go ahead and, and check off the view to source instead. Uh, sorry, not the source. Let's see if I can find it again here. Correct? No. Final result, of course. That is the one we need to use. I'm sorry. I'm sort of confused there, so I apologize for that. Uh, so we're gonna preview this really quickly. There's a little bit of stuff going on on top of me, which we will need to correct. Um, and there's a little bit of spill going on, which is also something that is going to be kind of hard to remove with this feature. Um, I'm not quite sure how we can do that because I have not worked with After Effects key light too much. Let's see, what does it have? It has softness. We can actually soften the edges here just like we did before. Uh, I don't think we should do that. Screen softness. Screen deposit white. I'm not quite sure what all these settings do. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave this one for now, and then we're going to go into the next one. Okay, so now we're going to try the one called Primate Gear. And just for the record, I kept my levels uh, effect onto the clip, and I kept my brightness and contrast onto the clip, and I kept my masking. The only thing I did was I deleted the key light effect. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go over to my effects panel. I can actually already see my Primate Gear down here. By the way, Primate Gear costs $500. Uh, if you do have it, that's awesome probably wouldn't be watching this part of the tutorial if you did not have it already or if you're just interested in seeing if it's, it's if it's worth buying I can tell you it is so I'll drag it onto the clip here and then we get this fine looking little panel down here uh, it's a little bit bigger than key light and it's a lot more customizable so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and say select background down here which says selection and I'm going to start dragging and uh, just holding down my mouse button and start dragging my cursor around on the, the green screen both in the light and the dark areas, like so. And let go, and it, you know, sort of fades it out here. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the view, and we're going to say matte view. And you can see there's still some, uh, still some spill going on around here, so we're going to go ahead and delete all that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to selection, and we're going to say clean background. So we're going to drag it around where we still see the spill, and just hold down the mouse cursor. And as you can see, we're actually slowly getting rid of all the spill. There we go. Make sure we have everything gone from here. There we go. The nice thing about this is that it is very easy to use and it's very customizable. Um, so now we have this done, we can actually zoom in a bit. 
And you can see we still have some gray areas in the white shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose clean uh, foreground. Start dragging on here, just like with the background. There we go. Now there's, there's a lot of uh, fine tweaking and fine tuning in this uh, thing here. So I'll just go ahead and show you guys how to use it. And then I'll sort of fast forward till I get a result that I'm satisfied with. So the next thing we can do here is if we go back to the composition view, as you can see, oh, damn it. We have a lot of green stuff going around the edges here. How do we remove all that? Well, if you go down to the fine tune and zoom in on your talent, you can see we have the, the, the uh, green edges around the talent. If I take the fine tune tool and just select a few pixels and it will actually come up with this little warning here that says use wireframe interaction, see preferences to avoid updating display while sampling. We're just gonna say, okay. I'm gonna select it again just to make sure we have it selected. And then we're gonna go down to the spill selection down here. And we're just gonna tweak it a little bit. And as you can see, whoa, it's going away. And we still got some green colors, so we'll just tweak it a little more. Actually, we do not tweak that one. There we go. We're gonna go up to the face and sort of tweak that one too, because we have some green color here we do not want. Adjust it, there we go. All right. And we do not have any more green spill. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go down into our effects, uh, our uh, primate gear effects. And we're gonna go down and select the one called Spill Killer. Now what this one does is that it actually, at some, in some cases you still have a little bit of green uh, spilling onto the talent when he's standing in front of the green screen, which you can't always 100% avoid. But what you can do down here is go into color mode and say, okay, right now it's set as blue, which means that it thinks that we have a blue background. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is say, okay, but I'm actually using a green screen, not a blue screen and then it can actually adjust some of the, the discoloring on your talent. Now, I can actually see up here uh, by going out of the matte view that we do still have some uh, background we need to remove there. So I'm just gonna go back up and select the clean background. Just sort of drag it on there. There we go, it goes away, like so. And I think we have some more here. Just gonna sort of take it away, there we go. It's all about fine tuning and adjusting here. So, let's go ahead and play this and see how it looks like. I'm just gonna take it down slightly. There we go and see how all this looks like so I'm gonna play it here so as you guys can see we do have a pretty nice effect going on so far now a little thing here uh, I want to mention is that if you go down here sometimes you get these bright edges uh, or black edges that is not good to look at um, we're gonna remove that so let's go ahead and go down into uh, it's called correction and go down to where it, it says defocus matte. So we're gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're gonna do. We're gonna look, take a look at the arm down here. I'm gonna take a look at the uh, upper shoulder up here. And as I start defusing, uh, you can actually see it face away the edge here. You can sort of take it away slightly. Uh, we don't wanna do too much. I would say no more than around four, just to get slight uh, this coloring up. Now I did actually have a light pointing at me, which is why I do have a little bit of um, white on my arm down there. So there's not much we can do about that. But if we play this, you can see we did a pretty good damn job. Even the hair and everything looks really good. Um, yeah, so as you guys can see, this is how you do the primate key effect. It is very nice to work with. I must say it's, it's amazing if you do need to do something that looks professional not something quick it, it does take a little longer to do this but it is worth it so i hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial here and this little preview of different ways to do uh, green screening and i hope to see you guys later bye